Now, as the world moves towards cleaner, cheaper technology in the transport sector to heighten efficiency and safeguard lives as well as protect the environment, Kenya is taking part. Well, players in the public transport sector are leading the pack in going green with a number of electric buses already in operation. Patrick Igunza caught up with a section of these stakeholders, most of whom are ready and willing to transition to e-buses should the operating environment be more conducive for them. Listen in. All over the world, electric mobility is gaining momentum. E-mobility is the use of electricity to power transport infrastructure as an alternative to fossil fuels. Even though developed countries such as China and the U.S. are way ahead in this, Kenya is embracing the push to ditch engines powered using fossil fuels. No one better understands the benefit of this transition than Nelson Mwangi, a Matatu operator with over two decades of public transport experience. <laughs> Despite being a lucrative venture, their profits have been dwindling over time due to high running costs. A situation that has compelled them to switch to the green alternative of electric buses. Sisi kama Super Metro ndio ilikuwa kampuni ya kwanza kununua electric buses. Kwa sababu tuliona ya kwamba mafuta ikiongezwa labda tukipotelea kwa stima tunaweza kuwa tukisave pesa. New as it may sound, this concept has seen a few e-buses ply different routes in the city. And yes, operators say they make more economic sense. Unapata ya kwamba ya diesel inaweza weka kwa siku elfu tisa. Lakini ya iye inatumia electricity inaweza weka kama elfu kuminatano. Kwa hivyo, kuna tofauti kubwa. Drivers are also experiencing a change while driving around. Ah, yata si choki kuitana. Watu wanajireta tu. For the passengers, comfort is one of the selling points with these electric buses. According to Mwangi, there are about 12 active PSV electric buses on city roads currently. All these buses have been supplied by Basigo, an e-mobility entity that's at the forefront in helping Kenya's public transport sector go green. What we are doing is the city buses. This is where the majority of all the economic activities are happening, are happening around the city. So these buses can actually operate in the entire metropolitan area of Nairobi because they are able to do between 250 and 300 kilometers. A day. Matatu operators are able to acquire these buses through a financing model dubbed pay as you drive. So it's a kilometer based financing so you are able to uh, acquire what is normally a quite an expensive asset and then we get into a lease program where you pay based on the mileage you drive every day um, and included in that payment is what you're seeing going on behind me charging all routine maintenance and service. We even do all the safari checks cleaning and even um, uh, just basic uh, repairs. But how much does one part with if they are to get one of these? So the buses behind me, um, which are the 25 seaters, we were selling those at 5.8 million and, um, and with a 23 shillings per kilometer pay as you drive. But the bus that we are now moving forward with, which will be even um, assembling locally, which is a 36 seater bus, that is going to be going from at 8 million shillings uh, if you're buying and a 40 shillings per kilometer in terms of pay as you drive, or you can actually lease the bus for uh, for 70, 70 shillings per kilometer. Basigo has already filled up its orders for 2024 with at least 250 e-buses having been pre-booked by various Matatu operators. Other than the economic benefits, 
comfort and silence, electric buses are also kinder to the environment due to their low carbon emissions. In Kenya, the transport sector, particularly road transportation, is one of the main sources of climate damaging CO2 emissions due to the use of fossil fuels for vehicle propulsion systems. A greater degree of electrification of the transport sector can therefore make a major contribution towards achieving Kenya's transport sector goal of reducing emissions by 3.46 metric tons of CO2 emissions against the baseline in 2030. And so this electric option, although new, is proving to be a better and preferred option for a majority of Matatu operators. Even then, a number of issues need to be taken care of, chief among them, infrastructure. We're only having two charging points, one along uh, airport road, the other one somewhere in Kikuyu. So you cannot go very far away from charging points. To say me unaelekea Mombasa, kituo cha kujaji gari moja maybe kipatikane Mali, Masimba pale, ingine Mtito Andei, ingine Voi, na ingine Mombasa. Kwa hivyo hii gari inamaanisha kwamba wakati watu watakuwa wanasimama pale Mtito Andei kukula, nayo hii gari itakuwa inachajiwa. At the moment, players are relying broadly on Chinese technology due to its global position in this green transition. In 2018, about 80,000 electric buses were delivered globally. 99% of those were delivered in China. In 2020, China accounted for 90% of e-buses supplied in the world. As the world rapidly shifts to electric mobility, it's the hope of many stakeholders that Kenya will be quick to take the queue. Patrick Igunza, Citizen TV, Nairobi. Very interesting report there by Patrick, though he had us a bit worried for his safety at a point in the story. Now, when the